hello internet welcome to another tutorial on antenna arrays this tutorial is a compilation of two element arrays in different configurations now what I'm trying to do in this tutorial is to compile all the cases of two element arrays we are going to discuss how the two element arrays can be placed to form uh, different types of antenna arrays for example if you look at the case 1 which I've started out here it's it's a case of two isotropic point sources uh, of same amplitude and phase and what I'll do in this tutorial is I'll mention the case here and then I'll uh, specify the statistics of that case that the distance between the two elements is lambda by 2 and alpha would, will represent the phase difference between the two elements and then I'll write down the normalized E for the electric field intensity received at a point at a point E in space is represented by normalized E and that is known as the array factor and I'll mention the array factor or the normalized value of E uh, in the form of an equation which will be a function of uh, the uh, angle from the center of the antenna array so this compilation will help you understand various cases and draw radiation patterns of these cases so that when you encounter these cases in bigger antenna arrays as individual elements then you can apply principle of pattern multiplication easily there so I'll start off with the first case this is a very popular case where the distance between the elements is lambda by 2 and uh, the phase is same or in other words alpha is 0 it's a case of broadside array and the normalized equation for electric field intensity at a distant point is given by this now if you plot the relation between phi and E normalized you'll find that for angle 0 it is 0 for 30 degrees it is 0.2 so it has started to increase as we increase the angle and at 60 degrees it is 707 90 degrees it is 1 at 120 degrees it is started to decrease again and 150 will give me a 0.2 180 will give me a point or will give me nothing actually and 210 will give me 0 0.2 240 will give me 0 0.707 so that is how you need to see the electric field intensity received at different points in space which are only dependent upon an angle which is phi and you can go on till 360 degrees I'm doing it for 300 now which is 0 0.707 and for 330 it is 0 0.2 so you can simply put the value of uh, phi here and uh, calculate the value of E and, and create this table and you'll find the maxima occurring at 90 and 270 and which gives me the very popular radiation pattern of broadside array which is an eight shape uh, radiation pattern of course you can find the half power beam widths and personal beam width but uh, from this table you can also see that the nulls occur at 0 and 180 degrees and the maximas occur at 90 and 270 degrees and and you'll need to follow the same procedure from the equation of array factor you'll draw this table you'll populate this table and then you would start making this 
radiation pattern. You'll start with 90, 270, 0, 180, and that is how you'll do it. And now, once we have known the case one correctly, I'd like to discuss case three and four now, which which are extensions of case one. So, as you can see, case three is case one plus some small change. Uh, case one is the points are isotropic; they have same amplitude. They do not have a phase difference, but now. What I've done here is I've changed the uh, distance between the elements from lambda by 2 to lambda. And similarly in case 4, it is equivalent to case 1 plus the distance has changed from lambda by 2 to 2 lambda. Which will change the array factor also which will change the normalized value of E n at a distant point also this is known as normalized field the normalized field that we get at a distant point is now represented by cos of pi cos phi and over here cos of 2 pi cos phi so if we now go on to make this table of the angle phi with the normalized field for 0, 30, 60, 90 120 for in fact all the angles that we have mentioned in the first case we'll get a different value we'll get a different set of value and I highly recommend uh, you to calculate these values by hand on your own so as to get a feel of how the fields are changing with the change in the angle but over here for for quick reference purpose I'm writing down all the values Now you can see the maximas are occurring at 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degrees and the principal nulls are occurring at 60, 120, 240 and 300 degrees which will eventually result uh, in a radiation pattern which will look something like this. and uh, you would see this radiation pattern being used uh, in many cases where principle of pattern multiplication is used with uh, with two isotropic sources having distance lambda between them so they use it as it is from this reference they take this case as a corollary and they reuse it in the principle of pattern multiplication. Similarly, uh, the case 4 is similar to case 1 in terms of configuration but the only difference is the distance. I've increased the distance from lambda by 2 to 2 lambda and the normalized field equation has also changed. The array factor has changed itself. So if I plot phi versus E n uh, I'll not write down the values here. Uh, th this could be, uh, you could take this as an assignment, but I'll draw the radiation pattern for sure. The radiation pattern will look something like this. It has more number of maximas in vivid directions. So you'll find, please understand, uh, this is not a side lobe. All these are uh, points of maxima. So the maximas are occurring at uh, so many locations. And similarly, nulls are also occurring at many, many locations. And you'll find it only when you find values for 0, 30, 60, 90, and so on. And 
I'll give you a link in the description from where you can copy the values of normalized field for all these angles. Uh, to save the time uh, here in this video, I'll skip this. Now we go on to the second primary case where the configurational changes are happening. And that case is the case of two isotropic point sources of same amplitude but opposite phase. And that is a classical example of uh, the end fire array. The distance is uh, lambda by 2. The opposite phase means alpha will now be equivalent to 180 degrees. So that will give me a normalized field equation to be equivalent to sine of pi by 2 cos phi. Now if you observe the difference in broadside it was cos of pi by 2 cos phi. Here it is sine of pi by 2 cos phi which will give me phi and en en stable to be exactly opposite of that of the broadside array case. So I'll have to write it down. So these are the angles that you must uh, try to find normalized field for because uh, you can take more number of angles but these are bare minimum number of angles that you must take in order to draw a correct represented representation of the radiation pattern. This is 0.97 at 30 degrees, at 60 degrees it is 0 0.707, at 90 degrees we get the first null, at 120 degrees we get a 707, 0 0.97, 1, 0.97. Of course it is symmetrical so we get a null again at 270 which is exactly opposite to that of broadside. So if I draw the radiation pattern that will become something like this with principal maximas at 0 and 180 and nulls occurring at 90 and 270. So again a very popular case but uh, we'll make some more changes in this case in the case of end fire array we'll try to change the alpha and see what all new cases evolve. Okay we now take three more special cases of end fire configurations. Now how do I mention these configurations? As you can see in case 5 I've written down this is case 2 plus a change and that change is alpha is now 90 degrees instead of 180 degrees and how would that change the normalized field or the array factor the normalized field has changed from sine of pi by 2 cos phi to cos of pi by 4 plus pi by 2 cos phi and when I make a change in the distance between the elements also and the phase angle also. Now here this is the case of end fire but the distance is reduced from lambda by 2 to lambda by 4 and alpha is also reduced from 180 degrees to 90 degrees and how is that affecting the array factor? The array factor now gets a value of cos of pi by 4 plus pi by 4 cos phi. So any change that you make in the physical configuration of a two element array would eventually change the array factor would eventually change as to how the electric field intensity is received at certain point which is a function of angle only because we are talking about normalized uh, radiation so normalized radiation would not would make the 
intensity of the radiation from the source to be equivalent to unity. And finally, the seventh case is the distance is reduced from lambda by 2 to lambda by 4 and now alpha is made minus 90 degrees. Minus 90 degree suggests that the antenna 2 lags antenna 1. Over here plus 90 degree suggests that antenna 2 leads antenna 1. Now from the previous discussion uh, we know that if we know the uh, configuration well and we know the array factor the only step which is left is to draw the table of phi versus E n. We'll keep on changing the phi. We'll try to find out phi. Uh, we'll try to vary phi from 0 to 360 degrees. We'll like to take as many angles as we can and then we'll find the values of E n and we'll do the same for each and every case. And you can find the value of normalized E for all three cases in the PDF which is given in the link in the description but over here I'll draw the radiation patterns which are more important so the radiation pattern of this antenna would look something like this the radiation pattern of this antenna array would look something like this and the radiation pattern of this antenna would look something like this but uh, the school of thought remains the same whenever we encounter any two element array configuration we first need to identify uh, the array factor the normalized field equation from normalized field equation we draw uh, the radiation pattern and we find principal nulls and principal maximas we can then reuse these radiation patterns straight away out of the book in uh, in the application of principle of pattern multiplication so having uh, all these radiation pattern and all these cases memorized uh, will give you an edge over solving the numericals on antenna arrays and I hope this comprehensive tutorial on the two element arrays and the normalized array factor was of help and if you like the videos in this series and in particular uh, this video then please consider subscribing to the channel and thank you for stopping by and watching the video you have a great day ahead bye